The Sony A1 was released this year with 50 megapixels, 4K 120p video, and one of the most advanced autofocusing systems in a camera to date. But Sony wasn't always at the top of the pack when it comes to cameras. Some of you may remember the early Sony mirrorless cameras, like the NEX series, which are cool cameras, but they weren't exactly Canon killers. Sony's photographic history actually starts long before that, and it carries a legacy of a once dominant camera manufacturer that has since vanished. Welcome back to the Snappiness YouTube channel where I find joy in shooting with older cameras. This is the Sony A100, Sony's first interchangeable lens camera system and the introduction to the now infamous Alpha Camera series. Released back in 2006, the camera sports a beautiful 10 megapixel CCD sensor and some high tech for the time features like sensor stabilization. It was announced alongside nearly 20 lenses for this new system. But how was this all possible for a brand new camera system? How did Sony pull off this impressive camera for its first DSLR release? And how did this help Sony rise to the level of dominance it has in the market today? The answers are in Sony's own innovative history and with some big help from carrying on the legacy of a once well-known but now oft-forgotten camera company. Sony had already been developing digital sensors and cameras for quite a while before the release of the A100 in 2006. Starting in the 1980s, Sony was among the pioneers in digital imaging, and before long almost every camera manufacturer looked to them to produce their digital camera sensors. That pattern holds true today, and they remain the leader in sensor production for consumer cameras. Check whatever camera you have now, and with a few exceptions, the sensor is made by Sony. So Sony was not new to digital imaging. But remember, while Sony had a head start on the digital imaging front, they didn't have the history of film cameras that virtually all other companies turning digital had. Enter Minolta. Minolta was a household camera name during much of the mid-century producing cameras and lenses that remain well-known and sought after today. If my YouTube demographic data is correct, half of you are very familiar with that name, and half of you may not be. Minolta has a rich film history, but you may not know they were also once a pioneer in digital technology. In 1985, Minolta released the first handheld DSLR, and handheld is a bit of a stretch here because like laptops and cell phones of the era, it was barely portable by today's standards. By the early 2000s, when the digital camera race was in full sprint, they released several DSLRs reusing their film era mount, even introducing the world's first sensor stabilization. Clearly an innovative company. But like many other once thriving film era camera companies, things didn't quite catch on in the digital world for Minolta. They merged with another company that has their own lengthy history with cameras, Konica, and made a few DSLRs under the name Konica Minolta. Not long after that, they announced a deal to jointly produce DSLRs with Sony, who up until that point had made fixed-lens camera systems. Immediately following this announcement, Konica Minolta then shocked the camera industry by announcing they were leaving the photography game altogether and passing off their technology and rights to Sony, thus ending a decades-long legacy. Think what happened to Pentax and Olympus most recently, but instead of the new company keeping some staff and brand name, it discontinues it completely. Just a few months later, the Sony A100 is born. So we're back to where we started, but it isn't just the interesting history that makes the first Sony Alpha camera worth getting these days. Let me tell you more about it. For under $100, the Sony A100 has a lot going for it. Sensor stabilization a dated but wonderful CCD sensor that produces very natural colors and even an eye-activated AF mode. Yep, you heard that right. Not quite like the new Canon, but the AF will trigger when your eye goes near the viewfinder like this. But those alone aren't the reason this camera's awesome. Sony may have packed some of their own special sauce into this camera, but at the core, it's very much a Minolta. And Minolta left behind one final legacy before altogether dying from the camera industry. The 
the Sony A-mount, or actually the Minolta A-mount. Sony made a strategic decision when acquiring Konica Minolta's camera tech and launching its new DSLR system. Rather than build up a new lens system, they would reuse Minolta's lens mount that Minolta had reused from their film era, and even reuse some of the designs to make new lenses with the Sony branding. That means that this little guy is compatible with decades of old lenses and years of new Sony A lenses before Sony killed that off too. But that's another story for a different day. Practically speaking, this means that some of the cheapest yet quality autofocus glass you can buy for a DSLR. This AF Nifty 50, 20 bucks. An autofocusing 28 mm f2.8, 30 bucks. And it goes on and on and on. If you have a lens buying addiction, this just may be the system that saves you from bankruptcy. However, this camera isn't without its flaws, mostly due to its age. I found the autofocusing to be slow and unreliable. The camera would often hunt and then decide it was totally incapable of identifying focus and just give up, which was frustrating. And like many older cameras of this era, well, virtually all of them, the ISO performance is limited. While I found my 28 mm and 50 mm prime lenses to be good lenses, the two zooms I have are quite soft and full of optical flaws even stopped down. There are higher end zooms that I'm sure are better and are still at a bargain price. But just know that, like all systems, there are some not so great lenses out there as well. All that being said, for the price you can get a Sony A100 nowadays, I think it can still be a good buy, especially for someone eyeing some vintage Minolta glass on a budget. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning something new today. Please consider subscribing, and if you enjoy discovering and shooting with old cameras, stop by our community at snappiness.space and we would love to hear from you there. If you're shopping for used gear, check out some of my favorite used camera dealers in the description below. Buy some great stuff and support my work while you're at it. Remember to go out there and shoot pictures with whatever camera you have now. And until next time, happy snapping.